Number one asks us to look at um, these triangles here. They're obtained by applying rigid motions to triangle number one. So let's draw in triangle number one here. And so they are um, asking us a couple different questions here. So part A says, um, which triangles are translations? And remember translations is you just move it over so we can see that three, five, seven, okay, all of these odd ones are translations. We don't rotate the triangle at all. Um, so all of the odd triangles, odd numbered triangles are translations. Which triangles are not translations of triangle ones? of triangle one. So that's going to be the even numbers and because they flipped. So that peak is on the bottom instead of the top. So then it can't be a translation. There was some type of rotation or reflection happening. Number two, the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Find the measure of angle one, two, and three. So if we want to look at this like we've been looking at um, parallel lines from the last couple sections, if we remember these two, so in a parallelogram, um, the opposite sides are parallel. So if we thought about this, we could think about rotating um, this angle up. So this would be the alternate interior angle, whoops, which would be equal to it. And then a straight line equals to 180. So we could do one. 80 minus 80 would give us 100 for angle one. So if you kind of think about it that way, you would also see if we looked at um, the other set of lines, whoops. So if we looked at the other set of lines here, we could also see, um, we could do a similar thing where you could rotate this 80 up here. So then angle three would be 100. And then that would leave 80 for angle two. The other thing you might remember is um, from middle school that the opposite angles in a parallelogram are equal. So opposite angles are equal to each other. And then angles next to each other total 180. Number three in the figure shown lines F and G are parallel. Select the angle that is congruent to angle one. Okay, so here's angle one. So they want us to select whichever one is equal to angle one. So is angle two equal to angle one? No, they add up to 180. Um, angle six. So here's angle six. Angle six would be the same as angle two, that would be the corresponding, and two and one total 180. So that's not gonna be good. Um, angle seven, so angle seven is here. Angle seven's corresponding angle is angle three, and those are next to each other, so they're gonna add to 180, so that one does not equal angle one. And then angle eight, so here's angle eight. Angle eight is corresponding to angle four and angle one and angle four are across from each other as vertical angles, so they would be equal to each other. Number four, BDE, so this angle here is congruent to angle BAC, this angle. Name another pair of congruent angles and how you know. So these two are corresponding angles. So that means that angle M and angle L are going to be parallel to each other. And then that helps us to then see that any other corresponding angles would be congruent. So angle BED would be congruent to angle BCA. So BED is congruent to angle BCA. And again, um, we know because corresponding angles force M and L. So M is parallel to L because of the corresponding angles being equal. Okay, so the ones that they gave us, 
then we know that other corresponding angles are congruent as well. So then we know that these are congruent because they're corresponding. Number five, describe a transformation that could be used to show that corresponding angles are congruent. So corresponding angles are through translation. Okay, so translate um, one angle. So translate an angle onto its corresponding angle. And then alternate interior angles. So what transformation helps us to show that alternate interior angles are congruent? And this would be rotating an angle onto its alternate interior angle. Number six, lines a, D, and E, C meet at point B, what must be true? Um, and so this says a 180 degree clockwise rotation will take D onto A. So the only way that we know, so it will certainly take D over here, okay? But we don't know if it'll land specifically on A unless we know that um, the segment B, D and the segment A, B are the same length. So this is not necessarily true. The image of D after a 180 degree rotation using B will land on ray BA. So will D land somewhere on this ray? That is certainly true. Okay, D is gonna rotate to the other side of B on that line. So it's gonna be somewhere along this orange ray for sure. If a 180 degree rotation using B takes C onto E, so they're telling us when we rotate at 100 deg 180 degrees, C is going to land right on E. Does that mean that E would land on C? And that is true because they're the same. They must be the same distance from B. So if one if C lands on E, then E will also land on C. Angle ABC. So angle ABC. This angle here is congruent to angle DBE. So is this angle congruent to this angle? Those are vertical angles, so that is for sure. Oops. Um, and then angle ABE is congruent to angle ABC. So are those two angles congruent? And that is not true necessarily. Number seven, E, B, and C are collinear. So they're telling us that these are certainly collinear. They are on a straight line. Explain why points A, B, and D are also collinear. So we can see um, that if we took this line, we could do a rotation. So let me write this out. Okay, so we could rotate line EC 30 degrees clockwise. And then we can, so if we do that, we can see that then we would create that other line because we see this 30 degree angle here. So if I rotate um, this side 30 degrees clockwise and this side, that's going to take me to, um, or that's going to give me line ED. So rotate line EC clockwise, um, 30 degrees clockwise, we would get line AD and rotations, um, rotations take lines to other lines. So AD would have to be a line. and ABD would have to be collinear. Then number eight, draw the image of ACTS. So let me get this drawn on here first. So ACTS, 
um, a, after a rotation around point C. So the fixed point in this case is going to be C. And we're going to rotate it around um, angle CTS. Okay, so we're going to rotate it um, using angle CTS which is a 90 degree rotation. So we're gonna leave point C in a fixed spot. Okay, and we're gonna rotate using angle CTS. And then we're gonna translate by CT. So then this would be our um, image. And then you probably just wanna make sure that you label the points. So this one is C prime, this one is A prime, S prime, and T prime. And then just describe another sequence of transformations that would do the same thing. So we could have um, translated it first. So we could have translated ACTS by directed segment. CT, so that would have moved us over to here. Then we could have rotated um, ACTS around point um, T by angle. And we just need another 90 degree angle. So you could use that one again, or you could use um, ACT. So um, and I'm going to put direction, so clockwise. So rotate ACTS clockwise around point T by the angle ACT, and you would have ended up with the same thing. Then number nine says that we have triangle ABC is congruent to A prime, B prime, C prime. Describe a sequence of rigid motions. They aren't touching each other, so we're going to need to translate ABC by directed segment and then get two points together. So I like to do alphabetical, so A to A prime. So translate by directed segment A to A prime. And let me just show this happening. All right, so then we're gonna move A to A prime. Okay, and so then we can see here now when we rotate up, so we're gonna have to rotate up and you can rotate whatever um, point you want. I'm gonna stick, whoops, I'm gonna stick with alphabetical. So I'm gonna rotate um, triangle ABC around point A prime until B coincides with B prime. And so let's take a look at what this does. So if we um, do this when we rotate and A needs to stay in the same spot, so I'm just going to keep putting A back in place until I get B to land on B prime. And so that would be there. And so now we can see that C doesn't coincide with C prime yet. So we still need to do one more thing, which is do a reflect, reflection. So reflect ABC over um, segment A prime, B prime. And then that would be it. Then that would flip C onto C prime.